Welcome everyone, again Paolo, for the fourth and last video for now about the uh, SP1 and what we uh, will do uh, and introduce with SP1. As you can see we are in a virtual copy uh, of a general electric version with the CRT display uh, set at the end of Formula 1.6 in Zurich. Uh, why? That's quite a good question because today we're going to uh, fly the aircraft and I will show you flying because as promised I will show you the uh, ECS system but also the uh, flying characteristic with the FD of the 747. During the SP1 we modified the uh, flight dynamics to be the more realistic about climb rate, descent rate, uh, with engine out situation we modified uh, a few things with uh, for engine out situation and I will show you those too. Uh, we modify the flight dynamics for the ILS, now the autopilot is much more uh, capable of following the glide slope the localizer without uh, problematics. Um, of course, uh, we are going to uh, fly the aircraft on takeoff and, uh, and flying, uh, and then I will show you now to land back to uh, our destination. Our flight today will be Zurich to uh, Lyon, so it's a quite short flight, it's just to climb up to the uh, crispy cruise altitude show you the visualization system then starting descent for the FD and out of uh, outland. Uh, I will now start up every system on the aircraft and I will do that on a 2D uh, panel also for the flight. Uh, I can fly on VC without any problem but with a 2D panel I can actually show you more panels at the same time showing you uh, more values in different places easier. Uh, I will just set up everything from FMC to the aircraft and I will just be back before the engine start because I want to show you the engine start and the duct pressure for the ECS system that we modified uh, from Hotfix 1 to, uh, of course, SP1. So just stand by a few seconds and you will be back for uh, engine startup. Okay, here we are. We just set up the aircraft just before the engine start. And as you can see, the route is loading, uh, everything is loading. We are ready for the uh, launch panel for the autopilot. Good important thing today, I'm going to show you a few. Uh, quite particular uh, SID and star procedures just to see you, show you how the 747 uh, fly on that. For on the departure we're going to use the baby 3 Sierra departure that means take off and then a long turn to the left to intercept um, the uh, radial to uh, Cloten VR and on arrival I will show you a DMER uh, with arrival and a high LS for auto land. Anyway we are ready I will show you the a few things I wanted to show you before starting the engine. If you go to the HES panel, now we change the duct pressure uh, PSI, it's more realistic now, it's 132. And of course, if you isolate uh, 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 a duct of them, you will see the PSI just going down. And these are being given by the people. Uh, of course, you have the uh, three parts giving you uh, pressure. Uh, for the startup, we want to uh, be ready so we can set up the hydraulic panel from all the pumps. We have full tanks in all cases except stop and then we can set up the packs uh, all three of them because we're gonna do a, a double engine startup. Uh, and of course you need enough pressure for starting two engines at the same time. We can start on the beacon lights, auto start is selected and as you can see now we can start the engines by going on the engine page. Uh, we modified engine start procedure for duct pressure and now it's much more realistic. Have a look at the duct pressure when we turn on the uh, star valve because of course this means star valve is going to open, duct pressure from the APU is starting rising and so we get around 40 38 to uh, get the engine start. So start engine number 4 and 3, we press the 2 button, you see duct pressure on both sides is starting, 3 6, 3 7, and then we can select closing the signal, 4, 3, run. And then we can go back and look at the starting. N2 is rising, this is generally true, so we don't have EPR, we just have N1. And as you can see, the engine is starting, and when the star valve closes for both starting, you will see that pressure going down to 31. Of course, again, 32, 31. And we've got the fuel into the engine. We have only one rotation, which it is rising less than the limit. And uh, so the engine start is looking good. Anyway, we've to start. If you have any problem, uh, the engine will be actually 
and ship down no, automatically. We're on 50% star out with closes 50% and 2. You see, and it of course just goes back to 31. And now we can start engine number 2 and 1. 2 and 1 on. Okay, and then we can set the fuel control to run off engines. And you will see the diff 2 engines just starting again. Got back to 38. And that's much more realistic than what we were looking before. We uh, decided to do it more realistically. And after, of course, when you have the all four engine giving you pressure, the duct pressure will stay around 37 to 38. See, engine of pressure with EGT. And we have a lot of rotation. Of course, waiting the engine to start, and we'll do after the after start checklist, take off, and I will show you the FD and the pressurization system. First thing to note while well, the engine are to stabilizing, cabin altitude is now set uh, to 1427, which is of course the elevation of uh, Zurich. And the landing altitude will stay to uh, Zurich altitude, just up to the point we will uh, switch over automatically. This is much this automatically switch over to uh, Lyon uh, elevation. And this is, of course, actually 400 nautical miles before the, uh, before the destination or halfway of the uh, route, whatever is the areas. Uh, but you can find this information on the uh, FCOM. So we can go to the uh, now to the overhead panel and set everything for after take after start checks. And three points on after time eight. We don't need APU anymore. And then of course we can select the strobe lights for any lights for the departure. I think it's good on the overhead panel, as you can see, all the outflow valves are fully open because, of course, we didn't took off yet. And you will see that the thing uh, keeps open up to the point we actually start and then the starting continues and the wave will be adjusted. Uh, now we are we will actually take off another V number one, actually, on my selector. We can set the time as we have got to the side and we can set the trim as we see 5.3 is expected to be 5.3. And select 5.3. And 5.3 is selected with the switches. That's done. We don't need to see you anymore. We just remember 153v1, 167 rotation v2 is 178. And as you can see, we have sorry, uh, uh, two procedures so 800 feet uh, reduction to climb and then acceleration to 3000 feet. Of course, we are quite heavy, so our speed will after takeoff will be quite high, but I will actually use speed intervention as in real happens for example to keep the speed uh, decent for actually the uh, turn before being uh, on the clear, uh, closing view or uh, intercept heading. Anyway, as you can see now we have uh, everything set up, 24 degrees, we can even show you much more is warm, so you can actually select as temperature, temperature will be adjusted in a few seconds. You will see uh, we adjusted the time, now we actually took more time to adjust. Well, before it was quite fast, but this is more realistic because, of course, you are adjusting more uh, slow as, of course, the cabin is big, so we need more time to learn. Uh, now we can trust, we can test the uh, controls. You can see both final ones are actually moving because flaps are down. And and we are ready to go. We can set the start page off. I will keep the uh, engine page on because we have the pressurization system here and it's quite interesting for you to see that because of course we are talking about the ECS system and of course we are ready for, the, for this. Uh, we can set terrain on home and if you go to the FO we can select weather and uh, traffic. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot I lost the the decas to TA array, uh, everything is good looking, everything is looking good, and so we can go. We turn off the throttle to 70%, and there is a big spot here for with the tick of Koran, 70%, everything stabilized, tick of Koran, our reference is being shown there. Okay, here we go. As you can see, the sound has gone away because this will be easier to me to talk and for you to understand what I'm saying. 
as you can see now speed of acceleration uh, engines are actually coming up to 98.2 percent and one as you can see hold on the PFD means now the servo motor is disconnected you can adjust them if is wrong but now the N1 is quite close to the rear one to the correct one so we leave it them now accelerating along the runway keeping straight on the center line you can see speed is going up quite slowly we have the rated takeoff runway is long enough don't worry uh, we use top, top cut for the performance anyway I will show you the hand flying in the first part of the turn and then it will turn on the CMD to show you Vina Vanilla V1 VR and rotation. Rotate around 2 degrees per second and then full the flight director initially. Uh, when you see vertical speed, check the altimeter. When the altimeter is moving, gear up, select gear up. As you can see, 50 feet from the ground, the nav is adjusted. Speed is slightly higher than V2, you have to keep V2 plus 10, so follow the flight director after 400 feet. As you can see, uh, throttle reference, I'll now VNAV speed now, we have VNAV activated and flying you see flight director to the left starting the turn and flying is quite heavy it's quite nice to uh, fly the aircraft with the safety condition as you can see now the speed is v2 plus 15 so flight director coming down following the flight director information and just accelerating slightly correcting the pitch to the left keeping 25 and then command left a selecting and we are under autopilot now as you can see on the na navigation display the turn is being done. Uh, you will see the magenta turn just uh, maintaining his own uh, uh, his own uh, sorry his own uh, shape because of course we uh, we want it to uh, be selected with the normal flap on the normal spin. That's just the depiction of the SID, but the aircraft will fly uh, properly, and you will see him now just taking us over to uh, the correct values. Have a look at the speed. One nine one is going to keep to actually keep the uh, turn perfectly uh, doable during the SID, so we'll keep flap stand and keep climbing up to uh, our initial cruise speed, uh, cruise altitude of flight level 250. So you can see enough speed is selected, keep turning, and we are keep turning to the cloud and VR. Have a look at the cabin altitude and the uh, rate indicator at the moment. You will see now the aircraft is starting to pressurize and now the cabin altitude is rising, the rate of the cabin altitude is increasing and the delta pressure is increasing at the same time. Anyway, turning as you can see, going nicely, enough keeping uh, his speed, even on a turn. There's quite some wind around, there are nine knots, there were nine knots before. As you can see on the top left corner, Zurich just in front of us, going to pass over it soon. And we are now passing 5,000 feet, 5,200 feet. Of course, now rolling out on the clothing, and when we are roll out, we can reselect speed intervention off, and the aircraft will start to accelerate to 235 initially, and then to run 270 when uh, flaps are up. Retracting the flaps now, you will see the retraction of the flaps when passing the selected, and CDU, you will see uh, the climb page. Keep accelerating, keep having a look on the cabin altitude and duct pressure. Duct pressure is stable on 3.2. Now passing flaps 5, so fl select flaps 5 now. Yep, flaps 5 you can see now speed control is 2.55, autopilot nicely flying, and check the vertical speed because as you can see the vertical speed is now uh, much lower than what it was earlier uh, with Offix 1 and release version is much more realistic. We have 350 tons at this moment, so. Uh, it's not for maximum takeoff weight, it's nice, it's a nice weight, but it's not uh, maximum takeoff weight. Now turning to uh, Brego, to the left, passing flaps 1, flaps 1 was selected, and as you can see 271 is the speed we want to keep. 271 is the clean speed for mm, normal operation, we are quite heavy, so our clean speed is quite high. We are just simulating a normal flight, so just imagine ATC giving you no speed restriction. Flaps up passing, so select flaps up now and as you can see 271 no flaps bar uh, select off on the gear select landing lights off to runway turn off lights off and we finished our after takeoff checks as you can see now uh, pressurization quite interesting as you can see outflow valves starting to close slowly not 
fully shut down but they are close coming altitude rising and the rate of climb is of course adjusting together with the uh, vertical speed this is why pressurization system adjust his vertical speed for a cabin vertical speed together with the aircraft vertical speed to make possible to reach the max the cruise cabin altitude as close as possible to the top of climb uh, this on the old fixed one was different we actually modified it and now is much more realistic to what was uh, supposed to be it was simulated even before but it wasn't uh, precise enough so we changed it and now it's quite precise on the cabin rate of climb together with the vertical speed so you can see now quite nicely, delta pressure is rising 2.7 psi, aircraft stabilized on 270, indicated airspeed even with the wind, crosswind on the right, 31416 knots, climbing to uh, 10,000 feet soon, and as soon as we change, we pass 10,000 feet, you will see the aircraft keep accelerating to less vertical speed, as you can see now with full vertical speed, uh, and the alpha valves will start closing slowly around this those are probably 25% now and of course depending on the rate of climb they close or open depending on what you need check now uh, the alpha valve on the right but check also the uh, acceleration vertical speed decreasing to 1600 instead of 2200 speed increasing rate of climb of the cabin decreasing of course because the vertical speed of the aircraft is decreasing at the same time and we are nicely climbing away to 250 as you can see, speed accelerating, still vertical speed less. It's quite more realistic because you see 350 tons is quite a heavy weight, even if it's not the full weight of a 747 sometimes. So it's quite nice to see that happening into the aircraft. As you can see, rate of climb now of the aircraft is decreasing 250, even lower, because of course we are accelerating. We can increase the range, as you can see, Vabit, because the terrain display, we don't need it anymore. And we can select uh, weather radar. Everything going nicely. As we see climb one still on. Economic speed it will be 356 and changing to probably there will be no change on the economic speed. We will select the transition altitude uh, in Zurich is 7000. I forgot to do it so I put 13,000 uh, 13, uh, so because we, I was close to it. Just bear with me about that. Economic, economic climb uh, as you can see the next limit is 7000 or above at the next waypoint. We are still climbing, still rate of climb is going now, top of climb will be 46 nautical miles. As you can see now, cabin temperature and flight deck temperature are uh, stabilized at 21 and 22 as we have selected. It usually takes 5 to 10 minutes now, more realistic than before. We can select 241, good airmanship to select the heading back to the actual heading. And rate of climb is of course 1300. As soon as we climb, of course, it, I mean, slightly lower, it will keep going higher around 2000 2500 when reaching the climb speed of 356 as indicated by the FMC or the VNAV of the aircraft. Wind is quite drifting now as you can see it's 3015 and so it's quite nice it's keeping the speed and the climbing altitude quite nicely even if the wind is drifting. I'm using Active Sky uh, Evolution in this case we are on FS9. We can select standard past the transitional altitude as you can see also on the FMC page so standard and set. Now turning right to Rotus, next waypoint, speed increasing and now climbing almost. As you can see top of climb, top of descent, quite close together. We just want to do a short flight, so we'll show you just uh, slowly how to do it and how does it work. As you can see now cabin altitude is quite nicely working perfectly. We almost re reached the 356 speed, as you can see vertical speed is increasing, cabin rate of climb is increasing to 450 and soon 500. You will see this happening because of course we reach our climb speed and the Avena will actually stabilize to this speed even with the tailwind will need some few seconds more but of course is stabilizing quite nicely that's quite fine that's the climb um, as you can see we are almost reaching the cabin altitude for cruise and of course the vertical speed is being adjusted for the speed of 1300, 1400, 2000 and as you can see everything is nice seatbelt can be set on auto because we passed flame 100 and weather radar to weather and just tilt plus one okay um, I think actually that's enough for the climb uh, you will see soon passing to cruise mode uh, I will just probably come back to the cruise when we reach, reach the top of climb because of course now we have climb trust is okay cabin altitude increasing again to the 
uh, desired cabin altitude for the flight. So just keep updated and in soon a few seconds we'll be back when in top of climb uh, and fully stable on cruise mode. Okay, we are now into cruise mode, as you can see, flight level 250, uh, 356 knots, uh, going through Earth's weather, just past the top of climb a few seconds ago, cabin altitude set, rate is zero, and keeping at 4467. Over to you, you can see now, off the valve is slightly uh, more closed than before, but it's not completely shut down, and that's the difference from uh, what was in Outfix 1. Outfix 1, all the valves were quite uh, fully shut down, they were slightly open, but not enough, this is more realistic, it's around 10%, and this is because if you get to the CMC, uh, of course, display page, you will see all the values with uh, precular out temperature, everything quite nice, when lastly, you will see star valves being closed, uh, pressure regulator shut off valves being open, and all the values. Anyway, if you go down to outflow valves, you will see they are around um, 10%, and this is 10% because, of course, uh, pressurization works in the way how much air is leaving the aircraft, how much air is being introduced into the cabin by the box. Of course we have 10% because the, uh, this is actually balancing the air coming from the box into the cabin and the air leaving the aircraft from the outer valves. And so we can keep the cabin out to 4467 with a rate of uh, 0 feet per minute and outer valves quite close. We have an FMC message probably is reset MCP altitude exactly so we clear it and we can set to the next fuel to do, we have the limitation of 9000 or above, so we can just simulate a descent to 9000 from the um, ADC, the other way around, yes, and 9000 will be inside on ultimate altitude, and we'll see Vina starting to descend as soon as we pass the top of the descent point. Uh, as I told you, I wanted to show you about the engine off situation, uh, how to show you with wind, uh, how to land with engine off situation and Vina uh, coping with it. Uh, of course, will not be precise as a VNAV with full full engine and everything, but it will be quite nice to simulate with you everything we did and everything we did with the engine out because we modified a lot of things for engine out situation. Uh, we can set engine one fail to one minute. Well, well, no, it's better to set engine three because it's more uh, critical for the aircraft. So we can set one minute and one minute, and that's fine. And just select for uh, engine failure. Back to the CMC, closing the aftalic panel. And now, soon we will start the top of the sign, as you can see, just decreasing the range to show you. And we are close to the starting our descent. Our descent will be quite nicely, and as you can see, there is engine out. In case when you set engine out, you will press engine out, and every speed, every FMC will revert to uh, active engine out situation, cruise, descent, or climb, and the speeds will be adjusted for an engine out situation. Now approaching top of the sun, changing the heading back to 239. And as you can see, MELPA just started at the top of the uh, navigation display. MELPA will be our initial star waypoint. As you can see, now landing out show changed to uh, Lyon elevation. That's why, of course, because we have uh, our halfway to get uh, between the two flights, as you can see, 800 feet out. Of. And now we will see caution, of course, because engine failing. But the speed first will decrease and then the aircraft will start descending. You can see engine tree fail and a few messages more about the failure of the engine. So throttle to idle, fuel cut off, and we did our shutdown. You will see the uh, restart indication on the low upper ECAS, but we will not restart it because we want to keep it off. So we can go, you see cruise, engine out, you see engine out, we will see long range cruise, 342 is less than the normal cruise, you will see modified engine out, long range cruise, and it will be engi engine out climb 282. And this is the situation in case of uh, an engine out situation, and the same goes for the uh, descent, even if during the descent the engine out situation is not as critical as much. You see now we have continuous, of course, because with an engine out we want at the maximum limit possible on the other three engines, and a thing you will notice, actually, engine is fail, but we still have rotation. This is different from what happened to uh, the aircraft uh, previously, because uh, previously we had 0%. We just simulated everything, so we modified that. You have rotation on N1, rotation on um, N2, and, of course, on all the on the EPR in case you're flat. In case you see, we actually got the uh, flight path. Uh, pressurization is decreasing, and, uh, of course, the speed is being kept. 2500 feet per minute is quite a nice realistic value and as soon 
the more you descend, the less will be the descent path because this goes more density and will be fine. NGT now the sensors are getting the outside temperature. We have rotation, as I told you, 16%, and this rotation will decrease together with the speed. This the slower you go, the rotation, the less it is. And with rotation, of course, we have an engine well milling, so we will be able to actually start up the engine again, and this is much more realistic than um, than before when it was 0%, even if it was possible to restart it. We work a lot about that, and you will see that in SP1 you can do a lot of with engine out situation. We have quite a strong wind now, 1, 2, 5, 5, five 0. Uh, transition level we will keep flavor 1 is 0 if you, even if it's not realistic for Leon. Uh, speed transition will be 240, 10,000 feet. Now, as you can see, speed is quite high. We are following Viv enough path, so uh, speed will not be kept perfectly. The is kept is keeping the path perfectly, so you have to actually use the throttle with the whole mode because, as you can see, we are in all mode. This means the several motor of the engine are disconnected, and so the pilots have the control. As you can see, I can actually move forward, move backwards, and actually select the thrust. I prefer to keep the speed in VNF path mode, so it's quite different from the Sun Free when you want to keep it. You can see now we are adjusting the path to keep uh, the descent being done. As you can see, next wheel power mill will be less than one eight, level one eight zero below, and then will be twelve thousand or below. With quite a little bit of uh, descent uh, constraint for the uh, Leon descent. Now the path, as you can see, is going down because we are decelerating, but not fast enough because we have some tailwind, and I didn't enter into the forecast page. So you will see actually we can actually open the. Uh, speed brakes, so the speed will get down. As you can see, the uh, vertical speed is 1800. It's getting a lower vertical speed as soon as we descend, and so the rate of descent of the cabin is actually adjusting together with the vertical speed the same way we were doing the climb. You can see active right one, legs 1500 feet now. You can see rate of the cabin is 250. Is it is becoming less when you decrease the vertical speed, of course. Okay, uh, we're coming quite close to the um, final. You can see it's quite long. We have a DME arc to a ILS. Uh, there's no way. There's no point in actually showing you all the descent at this point. So I will probably keep showing you everything. Keep back to one zero one eight, as you can see one eight Pascal now because we passed transition level. And one zero one eight back. Check the standby altimeter. One zero one eight two uh, values are quite close, so it's fine. Uh, OK, aircraft is still going down to the path. We have speed brakes out throughout decreasing the speed to 250 before mail pump. So we will be back soon with the uh, last part when we are around flight level 100 to show you the DME arc, the engine off situation, and VNAV track, uh, tracking, the rudder uh, correction with an engine out, and of course the auto line. As you can see now, we pass to the last situation. We are turning to uh, delta 1, 1, uh, delta 0, that will be our 5000 uh, checkpoint for entering the DME arc and the final approach phase. Okay, we are descending 8300 feet. This vertical speed is quite low because we have to descend to 5000 there. So as you can see, the rate is at least at zero. It's, it's really, really low 100, 500, depending, sorry, uh, 50, 100, depending on uh, what is our actual uh, descent. Anyway, the cabin altitude is decreasing. You can see we will do the DME arc, then a left turn with localizer capture, and uh, uh, then an outland ILS to runway 36 left. We are quite overweight today because, of course, we started with 350 tons and we just did a, a 20 minutes flight. So it will be an overweight landing, uh, outland, high speed arrival with auto brakes, and uh, of course, wind from headwind and a little bit of crosswind. This will be quite interesting because, of course, you will see everything happening uh, at the same time on the iFly, so you will see an extreme situation on aircraft and the iFly, how is it simulating that? We're of course on the downwind leg, we can say that for the approach, descending 7400 feet now, and if you look in the upper ECAS, there will be the magenta indication for the engine restart, it's now flight 70 and will change as soon as you start drifting down or descending, so adjusting the values for the specific flight level you're flying and showing you the perfect envelope for uh, flying. We are now descending still, flaps up to 50 knots, and descending slowly, quite slowly, to the 
approach point. Whatever you see now, this, the wind is, it keeps drifting today, it's quite strange wind anyway. In each ref, we can set the speed, you will see, flaps dirty, 169, wind correction, we expect 8 knots uh, headwind, so half of the headwind plus the gusting is 4 knots for this approach. And so our approach speed will be 173. As you can see, perfect, program is OK, and we can close this video. As you can see, highlights is set up. We have Sierra Alpha November 110.75355 automatically selected and is correct. You can see localizer is actually tuned in and we have the indication we don't have the glider well because we are quite high. You can see 5,000 feet and then we will turn and descend to 3,000 feet and this is setting the altitude window for our keep descending. The DME arc is quite strengthening but the air flies of course pulling in all the airlines are able to do it quite properly. As you can see cabin altitude now slowly coming down to 800 feet that is actually the uh, landing altitude for the cabin. And so we can see, you will see half a valve opening slightly more than 10% as before and that can be seen in the ECS panel 14, 13 and of course going up to gain to 14 and changing 12 of course depending on how much is the rate of climb and descent of the cabin the highest the rate the bigger the uh, more open now is the outflow valve this is simulated very well with a perfect model on modeling of the system by the iFly team that thing is enough for the ECS system and the pressurization and we can set you see how the brakes to three it builds on and we are ready for approach you see, low, oh, now that's good. Localize and glider buffs indicated and displayed. Terrain radar is on. We are approaching the point of start of the DME arc. Time to get flaps one and decelerating a little to 230. So, starting at the DME arc now, as you can see, the glider loop is actually coming in nicely. And again, speed brake arm now. And we can check it by, with the lever. Okay, now as you can see the uh, wind is coming quite nicely to the final approach wind we were expecting. So from the north, uh, northerly, sort of southerly direction, 10 knots. We expect 8 knots during the approach. Close to the ground the wind is slower. But more turbulent. Uh, 230 starting DME arc. Nicely. And speed Alnav and VNAV path initiated. We can select localizer. And as you can see, Alnav lock is in white and the harm ready to be captured. Now the VNAV is uh, slightly descending. Problem of the VNAV is actually that he uh, is going to be at 3000 feet uh, on the glide slope, uh, just on the localizer, uh, on the glide slope capture point. As you can see now, localizer, glide slope, and IRS 3 is the uh, all three of them are actually updating the FMC position. Is really, really precise for some 4 Wind is nice, and probably we are going to switch to normal vertical speed mode to make it easier for us to descend to 3000 feet before intercepting the localizer and the glide slope to make it possible to not have any problem with any false glide slope or procedure. As you saw, uh, N1 for the engine number 3 is 8.6, of course, because the, uh, shlo the slower we are going, the slower is the fan rotating, and so uh, even the rotation of the engine will be slower when we slow down with the aircraft. As you can see, aircraft just tracking quite nicely. Cabin altitude is now 854. Right view, uh, minimum set on 50. Uh, we can set flaps 5 and start decreasing on 210. Ready for the localizer uh, capture. Now the aircraft is actually following the path, the VNAV path, and is fine. So of course when you set flaps you have a nose down, more nose up pitch moment for the 74. We can now switch to uh, you can see coming out to 853 is quite close to the 800 we need. Now the aircraft is keep descending. We can actually switch to vertical speed would be easier for us to go back to 3000 before the glide slope. So yes, that's a good idea I guess. Of course because every single time VNAV is expected to use no flaps. Uh, 
or not expecting any pitching moment when you set the flaps so as soon as you put flaps the VNAV path will change the aircraft has to correct for it and of course if you didn't enter the forecast it will be different so we can actually go for vertical speed mode and increase to 1800 feet per minute and get before the uh, Fox 40 and 36 left that is where we are supposed to join the glider. As you can see now we have the range at uh, the green range arc for the descent is a really really nice feature coming descending glide slope coming up and of course we are approaching the turn point where we have to get the localizer oh yeah exactly now localizer indicated just going to intercept localizer you will see the aircraft not perfectly getting the localizer initially because we have an engine out so uh, rather is actually being used to correct for the deviation but of course it's not enough we selected approach mode glide slope is live sorry glide slope is uh, armed and we are approaching 3000 feet setting flap stand and flap stand is set for the localizer descending to 190 knots yeah there is just a second because of course uh, airport was loading the texture and bandicam bandicam this is my uh, software for catching the video usually takes some seconds away just really performance hog uh, software anyway we can adjust 173 set flap 20 gear to down as we are approaching the localizer and the glide slope is 1.5 dot above as you can see we have an intercept heading to the localizer because of course we slow down you can start it rolling when we were 210 knots now we are 180 so it wasn't expecting to be altitude is not uh, captured 3000 feet and we are close to 173 set flaps to 30 and now we are fully configure for the approach flaps 30 speed brake arm auto brakes free speed set on 173 and approach mode is on now it's slowly turning into localizer you will see it's gonna go a little bit to the left because engine out and then we'll correct while tracking the ILS glide slope is now alive and as you can see runway in front of us we switch to the approach mode Clap the CD 173 check, uh, go around altitude will be 5000 feet, so adjusting to 5000 feet and adjusting. Coming down lastly to 1720 feet. And as you can see, wind is 3579 knots, exactly what we were expecting. You will see when we will be tracking, there will be one or two knots um, crosswind. And remember, you see coming out, you now coming nicely, coming down. You will see actually maximum crosswind component for outland with an engine out is five knots. Today we have one or two knots, so that's quite okay for landing into the aircraft. Land free, roll out flare, 1500 feet, tripod autopilot is engaged, and we are stable. Just imagine ATC giving you the clearance right now. Check the wind is into the limits, yes it is, keep continuing the approach you can see it's slightly to the left again, it's gonna correct it we're gonna land probably left of the center line and then the rollout mode will correct for the engine out and this is realistic because of course rudder can cope with it but of course doesn't want to cope too much and one rotation is 4.8 now, is less than before as I told you and even now as the rotation is low we have even the cross blade because we're going slow, we're going low so a cross play is possible from another engine to start up uh, engine number three if we want to. We can get the uh, system as you can see rather in, in fact is on the left actually to correct for the uh, for the unbalanced condition. We can blank the blank the static start page and we are ready for land. Of course this will be probably a manual landing in case in the real case uh, but well, today is fine we can land with it without main problems and down 350 feet now approaching the minimums that's cool enough it's quite fine anyway we're gonna land it and we're gonna roll out on the on the main road anyway the main runway, sorry. 36 left, coming in nicely. 17 feet, 50 feet, flare mode is active. Idle, take the throttle to idle, and rollout is active. Touchdown, don't worry about the caution, is because we actually started the reverse. 
Of course we have three reverse to green, one to the yellow because we don't have any reverse. Auto brakes is braking, speed brakes are up. And we are rolling out. Autopilot keeping the central line really nicely. Screen to reverse is zero, but we have the stability to keep it going on the same runway at the same time. 80 knots, 70 now. Okay, 60, reverse to high low. And back to the normal situation. Auto manual braking. And set this autopilot to off. Fly director, throttle to harm. And keeping straight with the rudder. And stopping on the runway, of course, we don't want to get out of the wrong way and we will check of course the um, as you can see now now we are on the ground rotation on the N1 shaft is complete zero and we have engine out situation perfectly fine good gear 4 is not that high it's quite good we don't have that much problem we don't need fire engines to come down for helping us with the uh, temperature and as you can see, everything is working good. Coming out to 806, landing altitude was expected to be 600, and the flow valves are fully open. Well, that's fine. We landed. I show you everything we called about the flight and about the ACS system, engine out situation, and, and flying FD. I hope you enjoyed the flight, of course. There's not much else I can show you in the next few uh, videos. Um, so, thank you for watching. Uh, have a look on the forum if for SP1 probably will be soon we are still testing a few things but everything is coming nicely to an end thank you very much for everything for following me and the video i hope you enjoyed if you want to see anything else um, just let me know i know about the flood lights we will do it probably and show it in the next few uh, days thank you very much for looking uh, have a nice day and see you on the forums